We've got a $50 donation here from Ico saying the Roos is loose, and this time he's got Mex. Good luck. Have fun, friendo. You got this. And with that, it is time to set the Roos loose on into the breach. Take it away. Hey there, everybody. I am Roos SR, formerly known as the Roos is loose, and I'm here with Into the Breach. I'm joined on commentary by Blecky and Grimelio. Say hi, folks. Hey, guys. Hi, Good folks. to be here today. All right, there is a lot to get into in this run, so real quick introduction. First off, this is a roguelike, so I don't know what missions and enemies I'm gonna be uh, seeing, so my commentary is gonna be doing most of the legwork on talking. But we are doing the Frozen Titan Squad, which has some really cool ice abilities. We are speedrunning on easy difficulty, just because that's kind of like where the best balance of decisions versus RNG comes in. And we are putting the special pilot Mafen in our ice mech due to some uh, special things it's gonna allow us to do, which again, I'll let my commentators talk about. But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I am ready to go, starting in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Into the Breach here is a tactical strategy game. As Bruce men mentioned, it's also a roguelike. The category is gonna be two island percent, which means Roos will be completing two of the initially available four islands, then moving on to the final island. So this is our first mission. You can see Roos's three units he's placed there on the kind of upper left, the purple ones. And then there are these insect enemies appearing, or which, which are called the Vec. Um, now these Vec are going to be targeting not only Roos's units, but also the buildings on the map towards the upper left. When an enemy damages a building, it lowers that orange health bar at the upper left of the screen, and if that bar drops to zero, you lose. If an enemy uh, attacks one of your units and it takes damage, that's not really a losing condition. You can only lose if that bar drops to zero. Also, on the upper right of the screen, you'll kind of see victory in like four or five turns. Um, you're essentially waiting for that timer to tick down, and that's the end of the mission before you can progress. So it's really kind of a more of a game of kind of staying alive and preventing uh, unit da building damage rather than kind of killing enemies as fast as possible. Um, that's how the game works, but uh, Grim, how can we go fast in this game? Yeah, so apart from what Blucky mentioned about when possible choosing four turn missions rather than five, it's not always possible, but you do what you can. By far, the other important thing in Into the Breach speedrunning is reducing unnecessary animations, which can come from a lot of different sources. Some of them are going to be unavoidable. For example, certain missions involve environmental hazards, which just take as long as they take and you can't control it. Another important source of animations is going to be enemies spawning in. So whenever you see a little crack in the ground, that indicates that an enemy is going to spawn at that position on the next turn. So when possible, Roos is going to try to position his own mechs on top of those spots in order to delay the spawn by one turn and prevent the animation and at the same time, prevent the enemy from spawning or at least delay the enemy spawn. That's exactly right. So effectively, it comes down to preventing animations, choosing fast missions, specifically ones with uh, four, four turn missions rather than five. This is a five turn mission we're on right now. Um, and then uh, really just kind of also one interesting thing that you'll be seeing Roos doing. Between missions, he is going to be cutting back to the main menu. That's actually to prevent these kind of cutscenes. So as soon as a mission ends, uh, he'll go back to the main menu, hit the continue button, and then just kind of cruise on to the next one. You'll notice that uh, occasionally, so Roos actually got lucky there. Uh, his mirror mech, the tank mech in the upper right, shoots both directions. But uh, so he actually hit both an enemy as well as his own building. But there's actually this grid defense in the upper left. You can see it's 15%. Um, you have 15% chance to just kind of nullify or prevent any building damage that you take. And Roos got lucky there. So he is still looking extremely good on uh, building health. Yeah, we're already very much seeing the power of that ice mech. As Blucky mentioned earlier, this game is more of a uh, more of challenge about lasting your enemies than strictly killing them which means that in the context of Into the Breach, freezing your enemies is effectively like, like a one-shot kill. And as we'll see, not in this mission, but on the next one, that also counts towards bosses. So just remember as we go through this run, that ice smack, the one with, that's floating the giant green shield, is very, very important, by far the most important unit on this Frozen Titan squad. That's exactly right. On a lot of these maps, you'll have kind of, in the lower right of this map, you see this kind of yellow environmental hazards. Um, this is actually really good as well, uh, because you can see there, usually you'd need to sit, sit on an enemy spawn to prevent that spawn uh, for as long as you can. 
but because uh, the environmental hazard removes the enemy spawn, Roos was actually able to move off of those, let the uh, environmental hazard uh, just kind of remove the tile, and then he didn't even need to think about that. Now, here we are in a boss mission. Uh, Grim, tell us a bit about these boss missions. Yeah, so these boss missions are, well, the boss itself, I should say, is indicated by a small pink skull, and the boss is now frozen. Um, as you would expect for, there are elite enemies which are separate from bosses, but for elites and for these bosses, they are individually very powerful, which normally makes these challenging missions. But with the Frozen Titan squad, and by the way, this is a major reason why this squad in particular is used, we can just freeze the boss, take it out of commission immediately, and this, uh, these missions end up being some of the easier ones in this run. Assuming that the spawns yeah. cooperate, of course, which they've been a little mean on this time, but mm -hmm. you know, we've still got a whole nother island to go. <laughs> Yep, again, this is a two island percent, which means that Roos just completed the first island. He's gonna do a quick, a few quick upgrades on his units, upgrade, um, I believe that was damage, and then um, just kind of move on to the second island. Uh, this is, any any mission you see with a train is gonna be a four turn mission. You can see in the upper right there, uh, it's a four, four turn mission. Um, that is a huge plus. It comes kind of with the caveat of you'll need to watch this train uh, run an animation between each uh, turn, but you can actually destroy the train, which Roos does there. He freezes it, and um, he, he's able to kind of nullify that that uh, kind of bad effect. Yeah, something else we haven't really talked about a lot is some of the resources you get as rewards at the end of these missions. You can get power cores, which, uh, like you did mention, we use to upgrade the damage and movement of these mechs that we have in a particular order. You can also get some other rewards, like pilots and whatnot, but for the purposes of this speedrun, it's really primarily those cores. Uh, that we care about to give us just a little bit of an extra edge. Yeah, and we're and actually slightly behind line. where we would want to be with cores right now because we did destroy our um, one of the time pods on the first island, but we're actually going to get an extra one out of this mission ideally, so that'll get us back like kind of on the pace of cores that we want to be seeing. Um, so this uh, squad, the reason this squad is so powerful for speedruns is not only that um, it's an innate ability, uh, but th that freeze mech is extremely powerful alone. Uh, as, we, as we've been seeing, it's kind of one-shotting these enemies, but it also comes down to the pilot choice. At the start of the game, uh, Roos inserted this pilot called Mafan into the uh, freeze mech, the, and where the freeze mech would normally, whenever it shoots an enemy, would normally freeze itself as well, which is kind of kind of a balancing factor normally. Because we have this uh, pilot, which adds this green shield around it, that prevents the uh, unit from even freezing itself at all. Um, so it, it really is like you get all the pluses without any of the minuses. It, it, it's it's incredible. Yeah. That also means that uh, definitely need to keep that one alive. Uh, one other aspect of Roos's decision making I wanted to call out is that if you're paying close attention, you'll notice sometimes Roos will freeze the enemies and sometimes he will uh, kill them and sometimes intentionally let them spawn. What that is based on is a known spawn pattern, not in terms of the precise locations where the enemies will spawn, but in terms of the number that will spawn based on whether it's a four turn mission or a five turn mission. It's not always there with 100% consistency, but generally Roos is gonna try to kill the first two enemies and then kind of start blocking from there. Yeah, that's sort of like that's the exactly. pattern that we're ideally shooting for, but sometimes the spawns just go into positions we don't like, or we have to commit more mechs than expected to finish the enemy off. And so it, it's, it's, we get it most of the time, but not always. Yeah. Um, so overall, I would say just like kind of like as Bruce is playing through, he's obviously going so quickly. Um, but see, uh, see if you can kind of follow along as best you can. See what you would be doing. Uh, like, see if, if you can kind of make decisions along with him. Um, again, the goals overall is going to be kind of blocking enemy spawns, those kind of ruptures uh, on the ground with red arrows, as well as just preventing building damage. It's kind of fun to tr do your best to try, pl try and play along, even though he's just moving so fast. And if you find that you can't follow along, don't worry, because I don't think I could either. It's it's challenging. Exactly. It's like a, it's like a giant state machine in your head, you know. Roos is playing very well, but remember, this is a procedurally generated game, and so even though the game is built on very complete information, you do still have to adapt on the fly. And sometimes you get unlucky. Absolutely. I think overall, so so check out that uh, unit you just destroyed. There are some units in this game, specifically uh, spiders and blobbers. We just saw a blobber. Um, where where most enemies might just like target your units or buildings, sometimes maybe even webbing them to immobilize them and you have to deal with that. 
those two particular units, the spiders and blobbers, actually add new units to the field, um, which you'll often need to deal with. And this game is all about kind of minimizing things to do. You want to just make sure uh, the, the things you have to deal with are minimized. Um, so it's always not a good thing. It's, it's never a good thing to see those. Yeah, that's right. Here we are on the boss mission, the final mission of Island Number Two. Remember that this category is called Two Island Any Percent. So this is the second of the two large islands we have to complete. Once we're done, we'll be moving on to the final uh, fish, fish island. Not that the fifth <laughs> island. There are there are bugs in this game, not not fish. Uh, which, <laughs> um, Bruce is just making short work of these bosses, and then Blucky will toss over to you if you want to discuss what is special about Island Number Five. Absolutely. So even though this is kind of the only third island we're uh, touching, it is the, the final island, um, just because this is a two island and a two island percent. Um, now this bo th this island is broken up into two separate missions. We're in the first one now, and it's quite a bit more difficult because there's going to be uh, more more units, more elites. You can kind of see the one with the two pr uh, purple or pink arrows. That means it's elite. It'll do more damage and have more health. Um, and as well as new units we haven't seen before. It's just a, a lot more difficult overall. Um, so Roos is going to just kind of need to be very careful. Fortunately, his grid health is maxed out, oh, which yeah. is pretty rare for something like that. So uh, because all that matters is kind of finishing, not dropping to zero, he can actually risk quite a bit if he needs to and not worry about it. Um, if it drops a little bit, no big deals. But but we'll see if he ends up making that choice. But overall, um, he just needs to kind of minimize damage uh, as he can here. It's particularly uh, good to, to have high grid health going into the second half here because, um, as we'll see, it's going to be pretty beneficial to be able to tank damage on buildings um, early on in the mission. Um, one other thing of note is that whereas previously we've seen him go back to the main menu every uh, between every mission, he's now doing it just between for this mission uh, every between every single turn. It actually saves a bit of cutscene time there as well, well animation time. Yeah, on this first portion of the mission, we're seeing environmental hazards that spawn these little lava pools. Not too impactful in this mission, but environmental hazards are about to be a lot more important as we fall down to the second portion, right, Lucky? Yeah, absolutely. So the thing about the second part is that um, there are going to be these enemy spawns, especially on turn one. There are going to be these enemy spawns, just like uh, any other mission. But with the as turn two uh, approaches, the environmental hazards are going to be located specifically where your units are. And just like we saw earlier, if those environmental hazards are where the enemy spawns are, then it's actually going to take it out of the mission entirely. You no longer need to block them. It's just going to remove them. So Bruce is going to need to put a specific priority on positioning his units right where those environmental hazards are, uh, or right where the spawns are, so that the hazards spawn at those locations and take out the spawns. One fewer thing he needs to deal with. Let's see if he can do it. Yeah, and that phrase, things you need to deal with, is very applicable. There's just a lot to deal with, which is why this final mission, the two portions of it, are difficult. Keep an eye on that grid health bar in the top left. We did lose one portion of it, which was intentional. Uh, one interesting aspect of the decision-making in Into the Breach is sometimes you have to sacrifice your own mech health or even your grid health in order to, you know, gain the victory. We unfortunately were only For able sure. to actually block one of those spawns just due to where they showed up, but honestly one is still pretty good, so we're we're pretty much in the clear at this point here. Yeah, only you can see again in the upper right there, only two turns left. That means time is going to be coming up not too far away. He's blocking two of these uh, spawns right now. There's going to be one that gets away in the up, in the lower left. Yeah, as soon as but, I kill uh, this Bruce, enemy, there's going to be one little animation of like tentacles along these yellow lines, and it'll be time. I'll call it as it comes up. Time is going to be in just a few seconds here, and time. GG. Thank you, thank you. Wow. That was a really good run. You know what? How do you feel about it, Roos? I was just going to say you didn't get spider boss, so that's. I. Uh, you know what? Myself. That's like the primary thing I was concerned about is there's a boss that's uh, like a giant spider that shoots out a lot of extra enemies that we want to avoid. So, so I, uh, I have a couple of shout outs I want to give. First off, thank you so much to both of my commentators. Very helpful. They've been super dedicated to hopping in practice and helping to like learn about the game and um, practice to be putting on a good show. So thank you to both of you. Um, I want to shout out specifically from the end of the breach running community. 
uh, Amaranth, Isherwood, and R30 have been super helpful to me in like helping to learn the strats and stuff like that. Uh, very friendly people. If you like this game and are interested in running it, I think it's a great, um, it's a great like tactical game to get into running and the, the community is very, very helpful. So check them out or come to my stream and I can send you their way as well. Um, and then uh, before I close out, I just have like one thing I wanna say. Uh, so I'm a paramedic and obviously this is a crazy time in the world. And you know, I know that it's been a really, really rough year and people are getting tired of dealing with this, but please guys, we're so close. If you can stay home, if you have to go out, put on your mask, stay distanced. It would make like it would mean the world to me if people would just do everything they can to help us out, get through this last little bit here. So thank you so much, everybody. And I'm looking forward to the rest well of the said. marathon. Well, thank you very much, Roos, for all you do and also for that incredible Into the Breach run. A lot of donations are coming in via, well, via the donations, obviously, via gamesdonequick.com for the Prevent Cancer Foundation, including $50 from Logo Man saying, let's save this timeline from cancer. Good luck to Roos while going Into the Breach. Also, $25 from Imbert saying, first time catching GDQ live, so first time donating. I played Into the Breach obsessively when it came out. Best of luck destroying it, Roos. Let's get that Wand of Gamelon run in Awful Block. And also, it is coming down to crunch time. We've got a couple hours left, but we want to get some of those donation incentives met. And when it comes to Golden Sun, the first incentive that we need to meet chat everybody watching out there is the mia -less satoros fight now it's possible to skip the fourth character mia and battle satoros which is one of the most challenging encounters in the game if met plexa will be showing that off but it is a fifteen thousand dollar incentive and we've got a ways to go now golden sun is coming up after the mario golf toadstool tour run and that incentive will take place an hour into the Golden Sun run if it's met. So we need to start getting those donations in. If you want to get a train going, that would also be awesome. But make sure that you mark on the donation that you want to put it towards the Mia -less Satoros fight. Zap Trust contributes $50 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation, saying first time watching live and donating, had to donate for Into the Breach. Good luck to the runner, and please put my donation to the runner's choice. Ray Bello also donates $50, saying thanks so much to Roos and GDQ for bringing Into the Breach onto the big stage. I was looking for a shorter run to pick up during the school year. I saw this on the schedule, and it was perfect. The community has been super kind and helpful, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Good luck, Roos. And Zinster Eminent donates $25, saying, I've been watching you guys for a while now and I'm finally donating. My grandmother is a cancer survivor and I lost my uncle to cancer. So you guys doing AGDQ, even with the pandemic, lets me know that humanity still has its kindness. Thank you, Zinster, for the $25 donation to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. It's a $15 donation here from Lee Reyes saying, can't wait for the Golden Sun run coming up. So I had to donate toward the Mealis Satoros incentive. Looking forward to more amazing runs as the week continues. Let's kick cancer out. I like that. Both the uh, Mealis Satoros incentive and the idea of kicking cancer out. Thank you, Lee Ray, for the $15 donation. Yasashi contributes $50 and says, Roos, keep rocking it, man. I'm proud of you. Go GDQ. And we are going and going fast and raising money 
for the Prevent Cancer Foundation at Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 online powered by Twitch. There's a $10 donation from Songbird that says, Hey, GDQ, I'm so excited to see Golden Sun run this year as it's been one of my favorites for a long time. I can't wait to see it absolutely smashed. My donation goes to the Mealis Satoros because who doesn't like to see impossible bosses beaten by undersized parties? That's what I'm saying. That's why I think we got to get those donations in for the Mealis Satoros fight. Now, again, we do have uh, a little more than $12,000 to go for that incentive, but GDQ, we have done phenomenal things before, so I know we can get that incentive met, if not by the end of Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, which, by the way, we are getting ready for that run, still getting set up. Blue Candy is going to be playing Mario Golf Toadstool Tour for us, which is going to be incredible, and we will be getting to that run in just a little bit, but first, got to finish getting it set up. Bob King 156 donates $25, saying I was going to wait until the Golden Sun run to donate, but hearing about the glitch exhibition forced my hand. Very excited to see one of my favorite games of my childhood run, but until then, excited to see all the runs on offer. Donation goes to the Golden Sun glitch exhibition. And we'll be back with more awesome games done quick 2021 online in just a moment. Stay tuned. 